Hi, this is Trey Pastor. Welcome to my spoilers review of The Batman, which I absolutely loved. Again, it's my favorite movie. Like I was saying in my spoiler-free review, uh, this movie is absolutely fantastic. Um, again, this movie reminds me of sort of Seven meets Batman. <laughs> okay, a David Fincher movie. Like, it just a fantastic version. Matt Reeves did a great job. I only have a few quibbles with it. But other than that, this is a, a fantastic movie. The, sp the cast is fantastic. The writing is on point. Okay, there's only a couple, and I'll talk about the things I have an issue, uh, issue with. But other than that, again, I loved everything. Robert Pattinson, I thought, was great as uh, uh, Bat the Batman. He was more Batman in this movie than than he was Bruce Wayne. Okay, you saw him more as Batman than you did as Bruce Wayne doing this three-hour movie, which is, you know, <laughs> you know, it's a weird way to see it, but I, I actually enjoyed that. Although, like, I, um, I heard somebody was saying, I think Grace Randolph, I looked at her review, and she was saying that Matt Reeves had said that his Bruce Wayne is sort of a like a rock star recluse, I guess that's, he's going for that instead of rather than the, you know, the traditional, you know, uh, Bruce Wayne being a playboy, uh, you know, so that way you don't suspect that he's Batman. So I, I that may change, I guess, maybe in the second movie, because again, like I said, you see more Batman in this movie than you see, see him, you see him more as Batman, who his true personality is, <laughs> and Bruce Wayne, which is supposed to be the mask. So, I'm wondering if they're going to, you know, if they have changed it around during the second movie sequel, will they have them come, you will see Bruce Wayne a little bit more, you know, like, you know, being in public more. Because in this movie, the bat, you know, Bruce Wayne character is like a, re a recluse. He doesn't go out that often and stuff because they even make special mention of it. Carmen, Car Carmen Falcone even says it when he sees him at the funeral for the mayor. Hey, here's a guy that's even more reclusive than me. <laughs> you know, so he has a reputation in that world of not being out that that much but which you know which obviously you know would let, lead to speculation a rich guy that you don't see that around that much that he's batman so i'm wondering if they will change that around in this sequel maybe you know or at least include more bruce wayne in it okay but anyway uh again the cast fantastic again zoe kravitz i thought was great as selena kyle uh i didn't realize this as well but i think in some iterations selena kyle uh because then well i'll go back to that that point I'm trying to get off track here. First, I want to talk about the actor's performance. And again, Robert Pattinson, again, was more <laughs> Batman in this movie than Bruce Wayne. And I thought he was super intense. The, the, the opening scene, before you see Batman, you know, he's talking, he's doing a voiceover narration. And he's talking about how, you know, the, when the signal hits, you know, fear, and he uses fear as a tool that, you know, and you see the criminals committing crimes and stuff. But when that bat signal goes up, you know, you see the shadows, they, they, they're looking in the shadows, looking for Batman <laughs> because, you know, they're terrified because he's his, his reputation <laughs> that he's he absolutely, you know, so that so these criminals are absolutely terrified that, you know, they see that signal that, oh, crap, <laughs> Batman's out <laughs> and he's going to kick my behind. <laughs> and it's a, a really good. And then there's a great, the great scene that you've seen on the train that you see in the trailer a little bit when he's beating up these ghost face thug gang and. You just hear Batman walking. You hit. You just hear boom, boom. Like he's he's like you hear heavy, almost like a, like a, uh, like a. You know how the night how when you wear the armor and it's like a heavy. You hear the heavy. You, except less clangy, but you hear the heavy boots of him walking out of the shadows. Okay, you know because these gang members are you know they you know they follow this this guy out of a train and they're getting ready to you know to beat him up and Batman just comes out of the shower. You just, before you see him, you hear his feet, boom, boom, boom. And he comes out of the shadows and it's just, oh my God, he just looks awesome. And, and, and the, the fear, you can feel the fear that these people are having when he comes out of those shadows and just be, proceeds to beat the living crap out of those gang members. And, ah, oh, it's just absolutely fantastic. And Robert Pattinson looks great in the bat suit. He, and he looks, he looked intimidating and, and there's a, the scene with him walking to the crime scene after the mayor gets killed uh, by the Riddler. And he's walk. you know, you see Gordon walking and then you see people walk looking behind Gordon because you don't, they, you don't actually see Batman yet. But you see and, and all the cops are like looking at him and like, what is he doing? You know, they're, they're like stunned. You know, he's working with Gordon. And again, I love the relationship between him and Gordon. Jeffrey Wright, I thought him and Robert Pattinson worked well together. Uh, again, you could tell in the movie he... And they, I think he even mentions it, uh, uh, Commissioner James Gordon mentions, says, I only trust you because Gotham is just so corrupt. <laughs> he only trusts Batman. He said, he's, he's, he said he doesn't trust anybody else. 
And I knew when I uh, did that trailer reaction to Batman Punches Gordon, they, they, they edited that scene out because obviously there's a scene, you know, there's a scene where Batman gets, uh, he gets knocked out literally from a bomb, <laughs> okay, at the funeral, he gets, when the DA gets blown up, okay, and that scene is absolutely fantastic when the, uh, the Riddler basically kidnaps the DA and, and, and forces him to drive into the church during the mayor's funeral, <laughs> and he has a bomb shot to his neck, and he has the phone taped to his hand, and he's asking him, you know, and he, Batman answers the phone, and he tells him that he'll let him live if he tell, answers these three riddles, and Batman's helping him, and when Batman asks him about his corruption, he doesn't, and he said, I can't, I can't tell it, but I can't say it, because it's gonna, you know, even, it's gonna, it's beyond anything, this, you know, the corruption will bring down everybody, not just me, my family, everybody, and the bomb goes off, and it blows up, and Batman gets blown back, okay, and knocked out, and then they take him to the police station, of course, and then they're looking, you know, they're, you know, the you know, cops are surrounding him, and Gordon is there, and they're, they're saying, who is that? And they said, let's take his mask off. And then, you know, he wakes up and he just starts <laughs> shoving cops around and stuff. And, and, and then, you know, Batman, you know, Gordon, him and Gordon say, you know, he tells the, the hired cops, you know, let's, you know, he said, let me get to, I can, I can get this out of him, you know, cause they think Batman's behind, which is really stupid. But he said, give me the, give me two minutes. And, and all the cops pile out. And then Gordon tells him, listen, there's no way to, for, for here. He said, here's the key. Okay, you know, you punch me and then you just run out the back gate and then you know, to the roof and stuff and, and and get away. And that scene, that sequence was freaking awesome <laughs> when he just when he did that. He punched Gordon and then because later, which is I thought was funny, is that when they meet up again, he goes, "Yeah, hey, I thought you were gonna pull your punch." He said, "Yeah, I did." <laughs> that was, that was that was hilarious. And then there's a great another great scene where where um Batman they're chasing they're chasing down the the uh, the penguin. <laughs> uh, and they, uh, you know, and the penguin runs to get away, and he's, you know, he's shooting at them, and you don't see the Batmobile, you just hear it, you just hear it r revving up, vroom, vroom, vroom. and then you see the fire come out, and then you get that awesome chase sequence where he, you know, he chases the penguin on the highway and stuff that you see in the trailers and stuff, and <laughs> uh, uh, just absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, there was so many great moments in this movie, and uh, oh god, and Paul Dano as the Riddler. Oh my God! You don't see him physically, you know. You know he has the makeup and stuff on, you know, the you know the disguise on with the glasses. You don't actually see him as Paul Dano, I guess, for a lack of a better word, until towards the end of the movie. But I thought he was extra creepy and extra, and just intense. The Riddler was. Oh my God! He was. He was super intense. He was like, he wanted to expose all the corruption in Gotham, and. And he was taking all everybody down that he knew was corrupt and stuff. He and he was not giving a crap how he did it. And he was, ooh, he was, he was leaving these, these clues for Batman because he considered, you know, Batman to be, I guess, in his opinion, you know, Batman to be above reproach, you know, not, you know, incorruptible. And so, so he, he actually thought because <laughs> there's a great scene, you know, that you see in the trailer where Batman's banging on the on the window, yelling at him <laughs> when he comes back. He, you know, he kind of thinks that him and Batman are partners. <laughs> in a weird way in his head <laughs> and there's a, a, a you know the great scene where he's you know at, he lets himself be captured well actually he doesn't get let himself be captured because I guess he no he does he does let himself be captured because I was trying to think if you watch the movie there's a you know when he he actually kills <laughs> you know he kills a bunch of people and then, and, then he, and then we find out the big clue like I said the big overall arch of this thing is that somebody's killing all these officials. The mayor gets killed. The DA gets killed. And we know it's the Riddler that's doing it. And finally, we find out by the end of the movie that Carmen Falcone, the mobster, he's really behind everything. Okay, he's even even the Waynes who actually the Riddler thinks the Waynes are corrupt in, in sense too. And and they kind of give you a little bit of the backstory about how. Uh, Thomas Wayne saved Carmen Falcone's life one day and he actually came to him when he was running for mayor because a reporter was going to uh expose that his wife Martha went you know she was a uh a, an Arkham and she had a wacky family history you know whether I think that her mother killed her father or something some whack and he was going to expose it and the guy wouldn't be blackmailed and stuff so he actually went to Carmen Falcone and this is the part that I I kind of have to agree 
that this part kind of doesn't make no sense. He, Thomas Wayne would have to be really naive to go to Carmen Falcone to try to get this guy to, to shut up, you know, this reporter to forget to drop the story and think that this guy won't, Carmen Falcone won't kill him and then Bruce, you know, Thomas Wayne will have to owe him a favor. He, you have to be really naive. I mean, they kind of try to explain it away by having Alfred, you know, cause having Alfred know it and, and not tell Bruce that. And then when they have a discussion about it and Bruce, and he tells Bruce that, listen, your father was going to turn himself in. He was going to, because he didn't expect Carmen Falcone was going to kill the reporter he, and he was going to turn himself in. And then that's what led, you know, they're kind of implying that Carmen Falcone killed the Waynes. So to stop them from talk, stop them from talking. So that that part, I don't, I don't really believe that. The, first of all, that Th Thomas Wayne would go to Carmen Falcone and think that Carmen Falcone wouldn't use that against him. You know, he's a he's a mobster. Why why would you why would you go to him and think that he wouldn't use wouldn't do you know kill the reporter and then use that to blackmail you to get you know get you you know what you know, you'd be you'd have to be sort of naive to do that. That part I didn't I didn't buy that part. And even when Alfred was trying to say, well, your father, you know, he was going to turn himself. Come on, are you that? You, come on, even him. He, nobody's that naive to think that. Oh, you're gonna rat, you're gonna turn on a mobster and tell him that, to, uh, go to the cops. When, when, especially when all the, especially in Gotham, where the cops are corrupt and everything. You think you you gonna go to them and tell you, oh, listen, this mobster guy. I asked him to silence this reporter, and I I told him to talk to him. I didn't know he's gonna kill the guy, and he killed him. Okay, and th no, that 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 part of it don't make sense to me. But again, that's that's just me saying that. Anyway, um, but again, there's some, again, some great uh, scenes in this. Again, Batman being a detective, figuring, trying to figure things out. And there's a great, an intense scene where, again, like I said, the Riddler, is, he's going through everybody that he, he, he knows is corrupt. Okay, he, he investigated. He's, he was an accountant. And so he started, and I guess they had this big fund that they were supposed to, back even when Thomas Wayne was running, that was supposed to help the, help the poor and all that stuff. But it was so, the city of Gotham was so corrupt that everybody was taking taking money out of that. There was no oversight of it, so people were stealing from it left and right, and and in the real in the Riddler wanted to expose that, and he even thought that Thomas Wayne was part of the cover up too, and so we thought, you know, he wanted to expose that. Okay, we they, they at first they well because you you know that he didn't kill Thomas Wayne because of his age. He was probably young when that was happening, and he there's. There's, you know, there's a great scene at the you know, end of the, towards the end of the movie where he's explained to Bruce or Bratman about how, how Thomas Wayne, you know, he was part of the corruption, that fund that he's talking about, oh, poor Bruce Wayne. And, and they kind of lead you to believe that maybe <laughs> the Riddler figured it out that, that, um, that Bruce Wayne is Batman because he keeps saying Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne, <laughs> like you, and you keep thinking and Batman's kind of looking at him like side eyed thinking that he, he's figured it out that he's Batman. But he 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 he's actually didn't figure it out. He just wanted to expose Bruce Wayne too. He even sent the bomb to Bruce Wayne's house to actually kill him. Which actually, you know, Alfred unfortunately picked up the bomb <laughs> before Bruce and when Bruce wasn't there. And he, you know, he unfortunately for him he threw it away before it exploded. But he still got kind of messed up. So <laughs> Riddler didn't figure out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. <laughs> uh, and then the, the, they had a nice climactic scene towards the end of the movie, like in because you know they in Gotham Square Garden, which is, of course, supposed to be Madison Square Garden, where we find out, you know, we think it's all over once they capture the Riddler or the Riddler gets wants, who wants to get captured. Okay, okay, and then he has a bigger reveal, he, you know, because he figures it, that him and Batman are on the same side, but Batman doesn't re doesn't realize that, wait a minute, he has a he wanted to get captured, and he has a bigger bigger plan, which involves his followers, because he has... He has all these followers on the internet when and when they're in his his lair and they're going through all the clues and stuff, and then Batman figures out, oh wait a minute, he has followers that are gonna take up his mantle <laughs> while he's locked up, and they're prepared to basically you, you see all these guys dressed like the Riddler, <laughs> with guns and stuff, at the top of the you know the Madison Square Garden where the mayor is celebrating her victory, and and they're and they're getting and he he floods the city which you know, like all these bombs going off at at the same time I think it was seven bombs and. To flood the city, and you know, so everybody has to run into basically in the garden, <laughs> and and then they're gonna get picked off by all these gunmen until you know Batman comes to to helpfully you know save the day. It's a really intense scene. I uh, uh, I again I love this movie. This movie, oh, again three hours, not boring, not slow. Okay, and again the scene where Robert Pattinson or Batman 
you know, where he uh, punches, you know, Gordon and escapes and he's running through the, you know, you, I think you see a clip of that when he punches and he shoots the thing and he goes up to the top of it and then he jumps off and, you know, and he flies and he hits, he flies down, you know, through the city. He jumps off the building in GPD, G, GCPD and he, and he's gliding down and then he like, glides underneath the train, you know, the and then he hits the train and bounces off a bus and then rolls. I thought, oh man, that had to hurt. <laughs> That that was this wow, crazy, uh, but I, I again I love this movie again I think it had just amount my enough of action in it and suspense and and mystery and again the Riddler with his clues and stuff and Batman his ciphers and stuff and Batman being a detective figuring these things out okay him and Alfred working together and there wasn't enough Alfred in this movie for me I, I kind of wanted Alfred to be in this movie more to me he's not in this movie as much as I kind of wanted him to be. And maybe they'll they'll change that, you know, going forward in the next movie. That's my only another thing I didn't like that you know, Andy Circus, who I thought was a good Alfred, he wasn't in the movie. There's a great emotional scene after he gets hurt and Bruce is in the hospital and they're talking and he, and he's saying, Alfred, you lied to me uh, about you know, my father being corrupt and, and then Alfred, you know, Alfred explains to him, Listen, he didn't know that Colin Falcone was gonna kill that reporter. He, he you know, he was trying to protect you your mother and, and, and he didn't know and then once he he found out what Colin Falcone did. He was going to turn himself in, but then he got killed. Okay, by the you know, and, and he says, "Listen, we can't prove that Fa Co Colin Falcone did it, but you kind of know that he did it." Okay, and and Bruce says, "I don't want to lose anybody else. I can't go through that pain anymore." And you know, they have a moment where they hold hands and stuff, and it's you know really good, intense. And God, I just wish there were more moments like that in the movie with uh, because there's a you know a moment or you know early in the movie where you know they have that argument about. You know, they having the accountants come over and stuff, and Bruce is doesn't care about he doesn't care about being Bruce Wayne and being the uh, philanthropist and stuff. He all he cares about is he thinks his legacy is stopping stopping crime and stuff. He doesn't he think that's his parents' legacy, not you know being a you know a philanthropist and stuff. He he doesn't want to do that. He just wants to be the Batman. He thinks that's his way of giving back and honor his parents' legacy by you know you know cleaning up Gotham from the corruption and all that stuff and the crime. And, uh, again, I thought Rob Pattinson was great. Again, Colin Farrell, to me, oh, my God. I don't even, he doesn't even look like Colin Farrell. And he does a great job as the, you know, Oswald Coppapot. He just looks totally like a different, if you could tell me, you could have told me that was anybody. If you told me that was Colin Farrell, I didn't know that was Colin Farrell. I said, no, that's not Colin Farrell. That's another actor because he looks totally different. He just immerses himself in that role. So you don't even tell. And John Turturro, who's who plays Carmen, uh, Carmen Falcone, who's basically the the real puppet master of everything, uh, but you know besides the Riddler, <clears throat> okay. And the Riddler, oh Paul Dano again, is the Riddler was absolutely fantastic and chilling. Again, like I said, uh, when he had that moment with when he was talking to Batman in the, you know, in the police, um, you know, interrogation at, at you know at the prison, and he was talking to him and and. When Batman start calling him a freak and all this stuff, and he start what start spazzing out <laughs> and stuff, I thought that was great. And there's there is the there is the Joker in this movie because there's a scene at towards the end of the movie where where after Batman stops everything, you know, rescues the people in uh, in the garden, and the Riddler and Joker are talking back and forth, and I think even the the, the Joker asked Riddler a a, a a riddle. He said, "What do you have more?" Of of it's more valuable when you don't have as many, uh, something like that, right? What is what is valuable to you if you have, if you have? No, no, wait a minute. <laughs> it's uh, oh, I'm trying to remember the riddle. Uh, uh, yeah, what's yeah, what's more valuable the less you have of it? Yeah, and he said friends. <laughs> okay, so I think that was the real. <laughs> anyway, then he started that, doing that laugh, so everybody knew that was you know that's the real of Barry Keegan. Of course, who's gonna hopefully be the the Joker in a future movie and stuff? <laughs> so we had that little moment. Uh, you don't really see him that well. You just see him talking to him through the um, through the you know through the gates and stuff. But uh, we'll see what they do with that. But again, I love this movie and I love the world they created. And I thought Matt Reeves did a great job with this. The writing is on point in this, except for that that part about the Waynes being naive, Bruce Wayne's father being naive about Carmen Falcone. Uh, you know, going to Carmen Falcone to shut up a reporter and not and thinking that Carmen Falcone wasn't going to kill the guy so he can have leverage against you. Okay, come on. The guy's a criminal, okay? 
that that part made no sense to me. Okay, that that part you kind of kind of have to hand wave that, that you know. But I know they they were trying to they were trying I think they were trying to have it both ways to try to have that maybe Thomas Wayne was you know was corrupt, but then said no he wasn't really corrupt. He's just naive. I guess they were trying to say use that naive that because once you get in bed with the criminals, you know, you know, no, your hands are dirty once you you get because they even I think they mentioned. I think you saw that clip with Bruce meets Colin Farquhar where he talks about how his father saved my life and stuff. How he went to you know Thomas Wayne because I think that's I think that's in a comic too. I forgot what year Batman comic that's in where where Thomas Colin Farquhar gets shot and he winds up and, and he goes to the Waynes and Bruce Wayne's father you know because he's a doctor he, you know he's he saves him even though he's a criminal he saves him uh, and then of course then later yeah uh, Bruce goes his father goes to him. Because he needs, you know, somebody to kind of help with him with this reporter who won't is going to publish a story about his wife, you know, coming from a crazy family, the Arkham's. Okay, but that part never made that part didn't make sense that he would be that naive to think that you go to a mobster to try to shut somebody up and think the mobster won't kill that person <laughs> and or use that leverage against you. Okay, that thing and, and then not think that was going to come back and bite you in that in the behind. Okay, that okay, I think that part was just too wacky. But again, I love the cast, love the uh, story. Other than that little part of it, I thought the Riddler was great in this just insane serial killer who would just put people in these death traps. So like, so, yeah, that that's the one. This is like Batman meets Saw and Seven. That's that's this movie in a nutshell. Batman meets Saw and uh, Seven. That's the perfect description of this movie. Great intense performances from the cast. Again, that was the only weak part to me that the Thomas Wayne part right there, that was kind of weak, but I love uh, the Riddler character in there who was a serial killer, a very effective <laughs> serial killer who was terrorizing the city because all the corruption and stuff, and because he was an orphan who basically, he, he when he was telling Batman the story about how often and how poor Bruce Wayne, his parents died, but he lives, still gets to live in a rich tower and stuff, and why every winter he, was, he tell the story about how you know, the orphans, you know, because it was so cold. He said, rats would chew on your fingers and how, you know, a, a baby would die every winter. It just, because of the cold, uh, just, it just kind of broke your heart when he was telling that story. And that's why you can see how intense he was and why he was trying to expose the corruption about that. Because that, that, that fund, that, that fund, that revival fund that they were supposed to have that was supposed to go to the, you know, to the poor people, to the orphans, orphans and stuff, never went to them because there was no oversight over it. And there's so much corruption that everybody had their hands in it and was, yeah, and was taking money out of it. And this, and, and, and they never got any of it. And he was pissed and he exposed. And you, you can see when they went to their lair, he had it all mapped out because he was an accountant and he dug deep and he, he found out where all the money went. And that's when he started going after these corrupt politicians. He went after the mayor, the, the DA, uh, just, and the, oh yeah, and the commissioner, he went after him too. Just again, and he, of course he killed Carmen Falcone too. Even even after Batman busted him, he went after him and, and killed him. And just, again, he, he wanted revenge for all the corruption of Gotham, okay, which is like a cesspool of, go of corruption. Anyway, um, I loved it. Again, 8.5 for me. I loved this movie. Again, except for that, part but you know the the thomas wayne thing with them i thought that was kind of weak didn't make sense to me but other than that this movie is great fantastic i absolutely loved it i love the narration uh from uh robert patson as, as batman and loved him being a detective in this figuring things out getting the clues figuring out the riddles that's batman detective batman and i loved it okay anyway let me know what you think of uh the batman 2022 what do you think of it uh feel free to leave comments down below let me know what you think I have links to my social media in the description box, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I also have a link to my other channel, Bob Views and Opinions. Please check that out as well. Also, also have a link down to below to my patron. And I want to say a special thank you to my patron. His name will appear in this video somewhere. I want to say thank you to him for supporting me and always having my back. And again, my patron is only $5 a month. Tons of content on there. Tons of unedited TV show reactions on there. I got everything from WandaVision, Loki, uh, What If. I have a Hawkeye on there. I have Titan Season 3, Doom Patrol Season 3, The Mandalorian Season 2. The Book of Boba Fett. I have all four parts of Zack Snyder's Justice League on there. I got Superman and Lois Season 1, Superman and Lois Season 2, uh, Stargirl Season 1, Stargirl Season 2, and much, much more. Follow the link to the patron. Only $5 a month. And please give this video a thumbs up. and Hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload new content. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care.